Today, little is known about one of the most unique occupations of World War II, the military glider pilot. He was truly an unusual individual with a deep sense of patriotic duty. He also had an endearing love of flying and an ability to live at the brink. He flew a steel tubing flying machine covered with canvas and wood that was neither bulletproof nor crash proof. What his glider lacked in good looks, it made up for by being tough and able to take a real beating and still deliver men, equipment and supplies capable of facing an enemy once they were landed. He was towed into combat at 125 miles per hour with only one option, to release his glider at the proper time over a contested battlefield that was usually behind enemy lines. After he cut loose, he had but one option, to come down and find the best landing spot that he could. He had to take his chances with enemy gunfire and any obstacles that may be in his glide path. He then made himself available to the local airborne commander, becoming part of that command until relieved. There were many glider missions in World War II using one or only a few gliders. These missions were the eight largest combat missions of that war. This operation took place on the 9th and 10th of July, 1943, and was carried out in spite of thick dust, inexperienced troop carrier pilots, and British glider pilots unfamiliar with the American WACO CG-4A gliders that were to be used. 19 American glider pilots volunteered to go along as advisors and third pilots. 136 CG-4As took off, but only 49 are known to have landed on Sicilian soil. General Montgomery and General Ridgway considered it a qualified success. Much was learned and used toward later missions. The mission started on the 5th of March, 1944, with the men of the 1st Air Commando Force that will fly these gliders into landing zone Broadway. Listen to Colonel Philip Cochran's speech to the glider pilots as it was made. Now, is there anything anybody doesn't know? If there is, let's get it straight now. Okay, now just before I came over here, I had our final meeting with the British ground troops that you're going to take in there tonight. And I talked to the guy that's got the red flare that you know is going to be shot off if there's too much interference with the first few gliders that land. And he tells me that that flare is in an awful deep pocket and it's going to take somebody an awful lot of finding to get at it. So, if those guys have got that kind of heart and they've got that kind of guts, it's up to us to get them in there so they can do their job and get them in right. Now tonight, your whole reason for being, your whole existence is going to be jammed up into a couple minutes and you're just going to balance it there and it's going to take your character to bring it through. Now nothing you've ever done before in your life means a thing. Tonight you're going to find out you've got a soul. 54 took off for Broadway, 39 made landings, 15 were lost en route, but they had delivered in effective condition 478 men, three mules, one bulldozer and other equipment and supplies. Gliders designed to carry 3,700 pounds were found to have payloads of over 6,000 pounds, causing extreme landing speeds and contributing greatly to the glider crashes shown. With the equipment shown, a 5,000-foot runway was completed by nightfall and received C-47 aircraft throughout the night. The June 6, 1944 mission into Normandy used 517 gliders to make this the first large-scale glider mission in history. Many fields had anti-glider poles planted in them like rooted trees. One hundred three gliders went in at night carrying mostly anti-tank guns. The Germans had assigned a new division to the landing area on maneuvers and it was felt that the extra guns capable of knocking out tanks would be needed. 222 of the glider force were the larger British glider, the Horsa. The American glider proved much more durable and easier on both the glider pilots and the tow pilots. Over 4,000 glider troops were landed using 1,034 glider pilots. 300 jeeps, artillery, supplies, and over 238 tons of other equipment. Oh, 
210 glider pilots were killed, wounded, or missing. This first large glider operation went as well as most experts expected and vastly better than the 80% casualties some had predicted. The Southern France mission took place on the 15th of August, 1944, and 409 gliders were delivered by troop carrier. Again, anti-glider poles had been placed in the most desirable fields for landings. There were some problems with too many gliders arriving over the landing zones at the same time, causing the glider pilot much concern in finding available landing spots and having to dodge each other on the glides in. The large glider operation, codenamed Dove, used 444 glider pilots, delivering 2,600 troops, over 200 jeeps, 200 pieces of artillery, and 500 tons of supplies. The landings were 90 to 95 percent on or near the LZs. Operation Market Garden, the invasion of Holland, took place from September 17th through the 25th, 1944. These were the largest glider missions of the war and probably the most successful from a strictly glider delivery system standpoint. However, the weather turned bad after the initial landings on Sunday and what was to take three days took six days to complete. 1,900 gliders were landed with 1,200 troops, 800 jeeps, 500 trailers, 170 pieces of artillery, and 1,600 tons of cargo. 12 glider pilots were killed, 65 missing, and 37 wounded. On September 20th, 300 glider pilots were called to relieve the infantry, and most were used for frontline duty. They held this sector for three days and nights. The combat situation also called for them to find suitable weapons. This was the only time in American history that only officer personnel occupied a frontline sector in combat. The Battle of the Bulge, codenamed Repulse, used a total of 72 glider pilots who flew medical teams and their supplies, as well as 69 tons of badly needed gasoline and artillery shells into Bastogne. On December 27, 1944, 17 C-47 tow ships were either shot down or crash landed but altogether 1,000 tons of supplies had been delivered from the sky. General McAuliffe, the man who said nuts to the Germans, reported that these supplies played a vital role in the defense of Bastogne. At the end of December 27th, it was clear that this had been a very bad day for the 15 glider pilots that were missing. The last glider mission in Europe was across the Rhine River and included an air armada 500 miles long that took three hours and 20 minutes to pass one given point. Nine hundred eight gliders were used, and each tow plane pulled two. Also, this was the first airborne operation for the 17th Airborne Division, who did a magnificent job.
the Germans were expecting an airborne invasion in this area and were well organized in defensive positions. The flak that met this armada was the heaviest of any airborne operation of the war. But these gliders delivered almost 5,000 well-equipped troops, plus jeeps, trailers, artillery, and over 1,000 tons of cargo. Thirty-three glider pilots were killed, 55 missing, and 106 wounded. Airborne troops were the most vulnerable immediately after landing, but once these troops were assembled, their fighting qualities made them a match for superior numbers. Glider pilots had become more experienced, and on this mission, in spite of low visibility due to smoke over the landing zones, the gliders for the most part came in on or close to their objective. General Brereton described this operation as a tremendous success and rated it the most successful airborne operation hitherto attempted. On the 23rd of June, 1945, the last combat glider operation of the war took place on the northeastern part of Luzon in the Philippine Islands. At 0600, six WACO CG-4As and one CG-13A glider took off from the Lipa airstrip headed for the LZ at Apari and an abandoned enemy airstrip in the Cagayan Valley. Six jeeps, one trailer plus supplies, and 19 troops were put down safely at 0900. Although the grass on the LZ as shown was more dense than expected, one wingtip collision between two gliders was the only blot on the glider phase of this action. Shut up. 